Good morning, friends. Pastor Zach here, ready to talk to you today about Moses and continuing our story from last week. Uh, if you remember last week, we talked about how Moses helped free the Israelite people. Finally, after God sent 10 plagues on Egypt, Pharaoh let the people go. And we're going to pick up that story today. And we're going to pick up from now the Israelites are fleeing Egypt. They are leaving Egypt. And we're going to see what God has in store for them today. Let's take a minute and pray as we get started. Lord, I come to you now. I thank you so much for this day you've given us. Lord, I thank you for the great story we heard last week on Moses and the Israelite people and how finally you let them go and you freed them from 430 years of slavery. Lord, I pray that as we continue learning about Moses today, that you would guide our hearts and our minds and we would be able to focus on you this morning. Lord, it's in your name that we pray. Amen. So this week is a cool story and we're going to be talking about crossing the Red Sea. So I thought, why not come into the children's ministry where we are under the sea when we come downstairs? Before we jump into our story, though, let's take a look at our big picture question. Do you remember what it is? Is there anything God cannot do? And the answer is no. God can do all things according to his character. And we're going to see some of those really cool things in today's Bible story. So as I said, Moses and the Israelite people have been freed from Egypt. And they are now, they are now running and fleeing from Egypt. But God tells Moses that Pharaoh is going to have a change of heart. and He's going to come after them one more time. And our story today comes from Exodus chapters 13, 14, and 15. So, as they're leaving, God tells the Israelite people to camp out by the sea, to spend the night, to camp out. So the Israelite people do. And as they are camping out, that is when Pharaoh realizes, why have I let all these slaves go? Let's go chase them. So he rounds up his army, 600 charioteers and, and men and chariots and horses, and they go and they chase the Israelites and they are about to catch them. And I want to read a couple of verses from you from Exodus chapter 14, which just really stood out to me this week as I was studying to, to prepare for you guys this morning. So starting uh, Exodus 14, starting in verse 12. Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. So the Israelites were scared they were going to die because they saw the Egyptians coming for them. But Moses told the people, this is in verse 13, don't be afraid, just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians will see you today and will never see you again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Verse 14 is, is what really stands out to me. The Lord himself will fight for you. But I want you to hear what the Lord says to Moses in verse 15. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff, raise your hand over the sea, and divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry ground. That part's important. So I just want to talk about these few verses and then we'll watch our Bible story video. I love that Moses tells the people, the Lord himself will fight for you. And I want to encourage all of you that the Lord is fighting for you. Whatever battles you're going through, whatever you're struggling with, the Lord is fighting for you. Here's the thing. You have to take a step to follow the Lord. You have to take a step to reach out to ask for help. And Moses said that in verse 14. And what does God tell him? He says, stop standing around, get moving. You got to go. The Lord's going to fight for us. 
but we have to we have to go to you. And what I love about this story, and you can read it in, in chapter 13 and into chapter 14, and actually a couple of our kiddos, you guys were on it last week, you were talking about this part, how God led the Israelites by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night so they could move day and night. And that that wasn't quite in our story last week, but I know several of you talked about it. So I'm, I'm impressed and I'm proud of you for knowing your Bible stories, but that was part of today's lesson. And with that, let's take a look at this week's Bible story video. After the first Passover, the Israelites quickly left Egypt. The Lord led the people toward the Red Sea and the wilderness. As they traveled, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to lead them during the day. At night, God was in a pillar of fire to give them light so they could travel by day or by night. God told Moses to have the people camp near the sea. God said that Pharaoh would change his mind one more time and chase the Israelites. God planned to prove to the Israelites that he is God. Pharaoh and his officials did change their minds. Pharaoh got in his chariot and took his army with him. He pursued the Israelites and caught up with them where they were camping near the sea. The Israelites saw the Egyptians coming and they were afraid. We are going to die, they said. We should have never left Egypt. But Moses said, do not be afraid. God brought you here and he will fight for you. God told Moses what to do. Stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Then God moved behind the Israelites to hold back the Egyptians for the night. In the morning, Moses stretched out his hand and divided the sea. The Israelites walked through with walls of water on both sides. The Egyptians went after them. As soon as the Israelites were safely on the other side of the sea, Moses stretched out his hand again and the waters returned, covering the Egyptians and killing all of Pharaoh's army. None of them survived. When the Israelites saw what had happened, they feared God and believed that he had sent Moses to lead them. Moses and the Israelites sang a song to the Lord. The Lord is my strength and my song, they said. He has become my salvation. Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt and God provided a way for them to escape through the Red Sea. The Bible says that Jesus is greater than Moses. People who trust in Jesus escape the penalty of sin and have eternal life. Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt and God provided a way for them to escape through the Red Sea. What I love about that story is that they're camped, they're ready to go, and God says, Moses, raise your staff in your arms and tell the waters to part. And the waters part. But the, the coolest thing, and it says it in chapter 14, God says, so the Israelites can walk on dry ground. Think about it, if you've ever, maybe you've been to the beach, or you have been to a lake, or maybe even at your house when it rains, and you step in a puddle, the ground is not dry. And even when it stops raining and you walk outside, the ground is still wet, it's still muddy. But God said that the Israelites will walk on dry ground. I think that's incredible. So you have the sea, all of a sudden it's parted and the Israelites are walking down the middle of the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on either side of them. And they're walking and they get through the sea. And then the Egyptians who are chasing them, as soon as the last Israelite gets through the sea, Moses raises his hands again 
brings them down and the waves come crashing down and the Egyptians all died. God was looking out for the Israelite people. God was looking out for his people and he was battling for them. He was, he was fighting for them. And I just love that story. I love that God had a plan the whole time. And, you know, sometimes, and I'll be honest, this happens in my life where I'm like, God, I, I don't see your plan. Why did you bring me here? Why am I doing this? Wouldn't it have been better for me in Egypt? In, in Egypt. And God says, Zach, I got you. You just have to keep trusting me. And I want to encourage you, whatever storm you're going through, whatever problem might be chasing you or you might be trying to run from, it's not big enough. It's not too big, excuse me. It's not too big for God. It will never surprise God. And I promise you that He is fighting for you. And He wants He wants all things to go to His plan and for our good. Remember that. How, how can God help you when you're afraid? For an answer to that question, let's hear what Pastor Brian has to say in this week's Questions from Kids video. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian and it's time for Questions from Kids. Chloe from Louisville, Colorado asks, Sometimes I'm afraid. How can God help me when I'm afraid? Great question. You know, we see this in today's Bible story. The children of Israel were trapped between a body of water on one side and a really angry Egyptian army on the other side coming after them. And so they were terrified and they cried out to God in fear for Him to rescue them. And that's exactly what we see God do. He provided rescue for them through His power. I love what it says in there when Moses told his people just to be quiet and watch what God was going to do. It reminds us that God is the one who takes care of us because He loves us. And so that's what we have to remember. There are times in life when we will be afraid, but we always can remember that God loves us. He's all powerful and He'll take care of us and He'll rescue us from anything as well through His power. So how does God's faithfulness help you trust God when you are afraid? God can help us in a lot of ways when we get scared, when we're afraid. I've been afraid many times in my life, and the Lord has always, always protected me. And I pray with you all this morning that you will know that God will protect you. There are going to be storms in this life. There are going to be hard times. There are going to be times when you're afraid. And I want you to know God will protect you and he is fighting for you and that's I love I just love that that statement I've, I've been thinking about it all week the Lord himself will fight for you some phrase a phrase that I've I've loved and I've learned over time is you know I would I would go to fight for you I would go to war for you or with you and that's what God is going to do for us he's going to fight for us and I pray that you have friends that will stand up for you and and would do battle with you would would stand up and fight for you if you needed help. I've been blessed to have many people in my life who I know would stand up and fight with me. And I pray that ultimately I stand up and fight with God because I know He's on my side. And if He's for us, then who can be against us? You guys remember we've been talking about the Bagbies and how they have been using the different... Remember they used an earthquake to help reach people in Nepal. Think about some ways that we can reach people here in Annapolis. What are some things that we can do to share the gospel with people around us this week? Our key passage, if you remember, comes from the book of Hosea, and it's chapter 13, verse 4. And I want to read that for you this morning. It says this, I have been the Lord your God, ever since I brought you out of Egypt. You must acknowledge no God but me, for there is no other Savior. I think that's a great testament to what we're talking about this morning. Remember, God brought the 
Israelites out of Egypt. He saved them. And then he allowed them to cross the Red Sea and, and protected them from the Egyptians. And one more time this morning, I want to remind you that whatever battle you're facing, whatever is happening in your life, God is on your side, and He will fight for you. Let's pray. Lord God, I come to you now, and I thank you just for this great story of how you protected the Israelites and how even when they questioned what you were doing, you had a plan. Lord, and I pray that when we have those moments of doubt and those moments of weakness in our lives, we would stop and look to you and say, okay, God, I know you have a plan. I know you're going to fight for me. Lord, help us to share your light this week with the people around us. We love you so much. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. I hope today's story brings you encouragement to know that God is with you and he's going to fight for you. And I pray that you would just remember that if you're struggling with something this week. Just take some time to pray and tell God what you're struggling with. Say, Lord, I've been struggling with this. Help me. Use your power because I can't do it on my own. I can't wait to see you all next week as we continue going through the book of Exodus on our, our story and on our gospel project journey. Since I am here in the ocean, I'm going to swim out. See you next week.